Out. When I download the assignments, they come down in a weird manner from Angel or from Canvas. So it's, it's not as straightforward as it was with Angel. Um, okay. Um, let's see, where were we? Um, are there any questions over what we were working on with the licenses? Are we pretty confident about that? All right, good. Okay, there's a, there's a lot of questions in there. I'm going to try to try to address those one at a time. Uh, the question was is that that um, if using the date object um, in Java um, got a warning error saying that the date object was deprecated or a method on the date object was deprecated or something along those lines, and the question of what is deprecated? Deprecated in effect means that um, it's sort of a outdated way of doing it, that there's a new improved version of that functionality. I mean, any, any way you want to put it. Probably that's a better way to put it, that there's a new and improved version of, uh, of that functionality. So the idea is, is look at it this way. They had a date object. They replaced it with, I think, the date time object. All right? Now, um, all these people have these programs that use a date object. At some point, they replace it with a date time object. Well, it'd be pretty, it'd be it would be pretty horrible if you had this program that worked. You download the new Java, you recompiled it, and it stopped working because they got rid of that functionality altogether. So the idea is is they'll flag it as deprecated. And what deprecated sort of is is um, it. There's probably a better way to do it than the old method. They don't want to like remove it from the language because that would really put a bunch of people on the spot. Because then, then you know, you could go in to change the way that the output was formatted, and all of a sudden you'd you'd get these errors saying that this function no longer exists. So that would kind of be horrible, right? So they just flag it as being deprecated, which means look at the new improved. Uh, way of doing it. As a general rule, I would suggest if you're doing something brand new, it's probably better to go and clear it up because you probably want to use the better way of doing it. Um, um, you know, the, it, it, it might have eliminated some bugs or, or whatever. If it's a better way to do it, it's a better way to do it. We'll trust their judgment on that. Now, in the case of the date versus date time, it, it pretty much looks at looking, you know, and looking at it, um, it looks like it was um, almost like a Y2K thing. In other words, you specify dates as two digits, the number of years from the year 1900. So for something to happen in 1975, if you wanted it Christmas of 1975, you'd say uh, new date 75, 11. Because you start with the months with zero, then comma 25. All right. Um, the new date time, you specify the full four character date, uh, or full four character for the year. So if we were to look that up, Right here, they, they're indicating that it is deprecated. Specifically, this constructor is deprecated. All right. 
And there's probably a couple of ways to do that. I believe the date time class is not deprecated. Okay, that's not what I want. Right. Wouldn't even warn you it's being deprecated. Yeah. It looks like there's like a calendar object or calendar class for this that you can use to create a date that is not deprecated. All right. But anyhow, that's, that's what deprecated means. It's, it's, it's a warning. So um, I guess my guideline would be if it was something old that I was doing, I wouldn't change it. I would let it go um, unless I had a lot of time. Um, if it was something brand new I was doing, I probably would fix it. Um, but again, you know, under different circumstances, I could see, you know, taking a different approach. All right, I made a rookie mistake. All right, in the pizza class, believe it or not. Um, and let's take a look at it, and I'll try to explain to you what is wrong with it and how to fix it. I should have listened to my own lecture that talks about objects and what objects actually are. Objects are pointers to things. All right? Objects don't contain a value. Now the problem is, is that strings are objects, but it almost allows you to treat a, a, a string like a um, primitive. Right? Because you can do something like this. You can do that and assign a string of value. <laughs> Let's see what is that. Upside down. You can. There you go. You can do that and assign a string of value, and it almost makes it look like that's a primitive because that would be the same thing you do with a image uh, integer primitive, like that. But really, a string is an object, and S is an object reference. All right. What does that mean in this case? In this case, what it actually does is it creates a string object with the value of hello in a string literal pool, I think it's called, and assigns s to point to that. Okay? So if later on I said if s equals hello, it's actually going to work. And that's how I was able to get away with my rookie mistake because I was always I was always using literals. All right? So yeah, s equals that literal in the literal pool, all right? So when you're doing a comparison of objects, you're asking if it's an identical object. You're not asking if it's an object that has the same value of one attribute or another. So if I were to do something like this, and create that that way, then if I said if s equals hello, I don't think it would work. All right? Or definitely, if we assigned s to be the value of some control, like a text box on a form when we create forms in the user interface, or like in Android if you create a form and had that, that's not going to work, that comparison. So how do you compare strings that are equals? use the equals function. So what I should have in here is 
where I have if size equals s, I should have um, I should have if size ah, shoot if size equals s, and that will work all the time. That's something I knew, but apparently I didn't know it that day. <laughs> that's, that's all I can say, is that, um, you know, and, uh, you know, that's the problem with live television, as they say, you know. Um, you're, you know, uh, I've heard people talk about preparing a, 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 an example in advance versus creating it on the spot. Well, if I prepared this in advance, I probably would have had more time to think about it and whatever, but creating it live in front of you, I, I made this mistake. So if you're comparing strings, use the equals, all right? Because when you compare objects together, you're comparing their pointers. So you're asking if they are the same, literally the same object, not two different objects that happen to have the same value. Okay, one of the things I asked you about, the, the, cliffhander, hang, the cliffhanger from last time was, how I could make it so that my commercial driver's license class would have no methods of its own other than constructors. Yes? Yes. That's correct. Uh, to summarize that, um, the manner that you calculate the renewal is the same for both, right? You take the date it was issued and you add a certain number of years. In one case, four years. In one case, three years. So, let's go over that one method. And I'll write pseudocode. I won't write actual Java. But, if I had my driver class... And I had a get, and I have a issued date as a date object. And I had get expiration date. In the driver class, it would be add four years to issued date. In the commercial license class, because they expire every three years, the get expiration date would say add three years to issued date. Well, what is our motto as programmers? DRY. Do not repeat yourself. Well, these things are, are, are pressure, precariously close to repeating themselves. What's the only difference? The only difference is this guy you add four years, this guy you add three years. So, what if instead of doing it that way, we create a variable that says duration or something like that, an integer. And we then write a method here that said add not four years or whatever, but add duration years. We would no longer need that method. All we would need is a way to set that in the case of commercial licenses, in which case we would have in our constructors duration equals three, and in our driver class, in the constructor, duration equals four. So we could do that. Be, we could do that because the formula is the same in all those things. All right, um, and we could simply set the formula to. Um, to um, uh, set the formula to use a variable instead of that. Yes? Would it be more 
This would probably be a better way. All right. Um, and if, if the rules did change, let's say there was a different formula for calculating a commercial license. It wasn't simply a, a number of years plus the, the, the issue date. You could always then add the overrided function in if the, if the formula depended on a variety of factors. Maybe there was a kind of commercial license. And for truck drivers, it's two years. For taxi drivers, it's four years. For you know, whatever. You could always go and add that method back in if it got to be complicated. More complicated than that. All right. Questions? There could be a there could be a flag. Yes, there could be. Um, um, th that is always a judgment call that you have to make. All right. What would tip my hand one way or another? If there were some characteristics or some methods that were available for a driver uh, or for a commercial driver that wasn't available for a regular driver, then I'd do the inheritance thing. If it was literally just the manner in which it was calculated, if that was like the only difference that commercial drivers and regular drivers, everything about them was the same, just that, you know, the fee was different and uh, renewal date was different and so on, then I might consider having a flag in the class. So that's, that, that is a possibility. And again, the, what, what would be the tip-off would be is if there's extra stuff in the subclass. If there's extra stuff for the subclass, then you're better off really making a subclass. If there's not extra stuff, then you could just put a flag in. But again, we're studying inheritance, so I wanted to do an example of that. Other questions? All right, we're going to go over some new stuff now. It's been a little while since we did any new stuff, and this stuff is not on the midterm. Um, let's say I am a veterinarian, all right? And someone calls up and says, my pet isn't feeling well. Can I bring them in? And you say, sure. And I were to ask, then ask, say, well, okay, what kind of pet do you have? And they'll just say, well, it's just a pet. And it's like, well, I know it's a pet, but is it a pet dog or is it a pet cat or a pet horse or a pet rabbit? Nope, it's just a pet. All right? Is that a realistic scenario? I don't know, you're liable to get someone that would say that, but is that, is that a legitimate scenario? No. In other words, pet, Every pet is also something else, something more specific, all right? Now, to be sure, we could have pets that are dogs. We could have pets that are cats. We could have pets that are birds, and we could have pets that are this, that, and the other. But, and there might be benefit, because all pets have certain things in common, right? Every pet has a birthday, right? Um, every pet has a weight, all right, and so on down the line. So we could create a pet class that has those attributes and associated methods, all right. So I could create a pet class that has a birthday and a weight, and the appropriate get and sets for those, method, for those attributes. I could then inherit from that dog, cat, rabbit, and bird, and all the different other kind of, of pets. Then I could put in there, um, like, things that are specific to dogs, all right? 
does it chase mailman? Yes or no? All right, that might be a, a method for a dog, right? Um, does it know how to fetch? Yes or no? That's not really relevant for the other kinds of, of, of uh, pets that we have listed up here. I don't think anyone has ever taught a cat to fetch something. Now, cats bring you dead things, but that's different than fetching because we didn't ask the cat to fetch those things for us. All right? So, we could put then extra methods and extra attributes on each of these levels if we wanted to. All right? And then we could create a dog, we could create a cat, we could create so on. However, we don't ever want within our application to create a pet. Because there's no such thing as something that is merely a pet and not also something more specific. The way that we get around that is by declaring pet as an abstract class. An abstract class means that you cannot instantiate it. So if I make pet, a abstract class, then I cannot say pet p equals new pet. All right, can instantiate that. I gotta say more. I gotta say what kind of pet it is. So let's go and let's do this. Let's create a couple classes and play around. And we'll, I'll create some silly methods here, but you'll get the idea. Let me go into Notepad. And I'll say public class abstract pet. Now, Let me look up to make sure that's the correct syntax. Public app abstract class. Switch these around. So every pet has a name. Every pet has, we'll keep it real simple and say an age. And every pet has a weight. Now, I can create methods here for pet. For example, I could create a pet method, a pet constructor. that accepts my three instance variables. Uh, I, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. Uh, public void that name String arg name name equals arg name. So we're going to set the, the name and then we can create a public string get name. that returns a name. All right. So, I can do that. All right? Um, I can also do that for weight and age, but I don't I don't feel like typing. 
So we'll go and we'll save this as pet.java. All right. So I can then create a dog class, a cat class, and so on. So I'm going to create a public class dog. Extends pet. And I will have a method to tell the dog to bark. And it returns bow wow. I just want to have a method on dog that is not on pet. So I picked a dog thing for it to do. All right, so let's save this. Now let's make my test class. And I could do this. I didn't make any constructors, so the null constructors and no argument constructors are in effect. I can set the name of the dog as spot. I'm real original here. And then I can say hello. Get name. And then I can say Mark. And that's legit. So let me go and compile that. I can say Java C star dot Java should compile clean. And then I can say Java unit test. And away we go. 
speak spot bow wow yay all right now I cannot do this I cannot say pet P equals new pet. If I'm doing that, I'm the person on the line that says, what kind of pet you have? Well, it's just a pet. It's, it's not a dog or a cat or anything. It is just a pet. Yes? Yes, I could. Because a dog is a pet. All right. So I can save that. And... If I go to compile it, it will tell me pet is, an, is abstract, cannot be instantiated. Yay, that's a very descriptive error message. That tells you exactly what's wrong. Savor this moment. You do not get too many of these. All right. But you sort of get the idea, right, is that you can create a subclass, or you can create a, an inheritance structure and Yes, all pets have certain kinds of behavior. So we could put all that stuff in a pet class. We simply just can't create a pet class. We can't say new pet. All right? Because something is not just a pet. It's something more specific. And you can think about that, you know, uh, an employee. You know, everyone here at, uh, you know, at LC, we have employees. But each employee is more than just an employee, right? They're either classified as staff, administration, faculty, and maybe some other categories. But each employee has a specific, like, employee type that's distinct to them. So we might have some functionality that is true for all employees, but, all right, we are, um, we are going to... Um, create that in a abstract class and then inherit the concrete classes. The opposite of an abstract class is a concrete class. A concrete class actually exists. It's tangible. Now I'm going to change this up a little bit. I'm going to change my Oh, perfect answer. Perfect question, rather. So let's do that. All, the, all animals make a sound, right? All right. So I'm going to get rid of this bark. All right. Because, right, I mean, bark is just a sound that, that, a, that, that a dog makes. So I'm going to replace that with a make sound. All right, method. So we're going to pet, and I'm going to create a public string get sound. Okay, so we're in the super class. So we're going to be setting some defaults here. What is the default sound that a pet makes? Well, that's sort of, that could be misleading if we left it empty. Answer is there isn't one, right? We, yes, but we could actually do better than that. Because not, uh, not only an abstract class, we can make an abstract method. Now, what is an abstract method? An abstract method is one that you can define on the superclass level, but every subclass has to implement that method. So instead of putting something here that just returns some dummy string or like, you know, if you are reading this, then, you know, you have a problem with your pet or something like that, we're going to make it an abstract method.
And with an abstract method, you don't define any code. You just define the signature. All right? So what am I doing here? Public abstract string. I'm saying that every pet has a get sound method. All right? But it's an abstract method on the pet level. What does that mean? That means that everything that inherits from the pet level has to actually have a concrete method to implement that. So, I'll go here and if I go and try to compile it now, I'm going to get an error. Actually, I get a couple errors. Let me go and get rid of this line. Change that to make sound, because that's the new method name. If I go to compile it now, it is going to give me an error. All right. Actually, it gave me three errors. All right. But they're all caused by the same thing. I defined get sound as an abstract method in pet, yet I did not implement that method in dog, which inherits from pet. So I said that every pet has to have an, uh, a get sound method. I create a dog and it, the dog doesn't have a get sound method. So what do I have to do? I have to make a get sound method for the dog. So I'll go and fix that then by going into the dog. And say public, not abstract, but public string. And what did I call it? Get sound? And this is going to return by a while. I thought you were going to say I misspelled by a while. I was going to say, you know, ag dogs don't actually say by a while, so, but yes, return is important. Bark, yeah. All right, make, oh, make sound, uh, um, it should be. Actually, in my test, unit test, it should say get sound, not make sound. That was just a typo. Oh, and string, he's capitalized. I could vaguely hear what you're saying, but not completely. Uh, let, let's fix this and then we'll address the question. <laughs> I always do that in the lab upstairs. Okay, and now, now it works and it's calling the right method on that. Question? Yes. If dog had subclasses, excellent, excellent, excellent. So let's create two subclasses for dog. Let's create a Chihuahua and let's create a, um, what's, a, what's, a what's a good kind of, a hound, all right? Just a plain old dog, all right? So the Chihuahua, the sound the Chihuahua makes is going to be yip, all right? And the sound that a hound makes is going to be bow wow. All right. So let's see what I can do here. I'm going to get rid of the get sound method from here. All right. And I'm going to save it. Then I'm going to save as. Chihuahua 
I think that's how you spell it. Extends dog. And this returns yep. All right. Save it. Let's save it as hound then. Public class hound extends dog and returns bow wow. Okay. Let's see what happens when we try to compile dog, right? Because our test class right now, let me close everything but the one. Our class dog, we're going to try to get the sound from a dog, but we move that function out of the dog and into the particular species. All right. So what's going to happen if I try to compile this now? What do you think is going to happen? It, well, First of all, do you think it's going to work? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Who thinks it's going to work? Thumbs up? A couple, couple thumbs down? All right, well, let's see. Doesn't work. But it gives us two options here. All right. Number one is we could make dog an abstract class and say, from our veterinary's perspective, you don't just have a dog. You have a hound or a chihuahua or a Great Dane or a mutt or whatever. Or we could implement that method. So we could implement a default value for the barking method, the get sound, perhaps bow wow. And then we could override that for specific breeds that make a different sound. All right. So what I could do, since most dogs say bow wow, all right. I could go in and, well, let, let's solve it both ways. First thing I could do is I could make dog an abstract class. Uh, and in that case, I'm going to get the error saying that dog is abstract. I can't instantiate it. Okay? So, I could then change my unit test to say dog D equals new chihuahua. Not instantiating dog anymore, I'm instantiating Chihuahua. And therefore I can go and run this and bot says yep. Alright. The other thing I could do is I could create a method in dog. That implements because, yeah, most dogs, including mutts, and you can make a good argument for just having a generic, what kind of dog is that? I don't know. It's a dog. All right? I just found it. It's a stray. I don't know what kind it is. That makes a lot more sense than saying I have a pet, but I don't know what it is. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, there's just this thing. I don't know. It has, it has a few legs, some arms. And, you know, that doesn't really make sense. Or it would, be, it would be reasonable to say, okay, a generic dog has some generic behaviors that we can build in. All right. Pardon me? Yeah, 
Yeah, I did. I think I have this open in two windows. So I'm going to go and do that. Make sure I close out everyone. Yeah, I think I've opened in three windows. So now I can do this. I can say, give me a new chihuahua, and that'll work. All right. Or I can just say, I don't know what it is, but it's a dog. Or I can say, well, it's a hound dog. And there's nothing specific on the hound dog for how a hound dog makes a sound, so it will get the value from the dog. Bow wow. Now, if I wanted to override that, if I said, well, uh, you know, hounds make a howl sound, and I was going to do it, but I decided not to, <laughs> all right, uh, then we could override it, all right? And we should be okay. All right. Spots a hound and goes bow wow. All right. Now, if we made cat, what would we need to do? If we made cat, we'd have to make a get sound for the cat. Because we've, assuming cat over, overrode it or extended uh, pet. Because when we put in an abstract class, when we define for an uh, for an abstract class, so we define an abstract method. Well, that's not the one I wanted to open. This is the one I wanted to open. When we define it as an abstract method, it means anyone that inherits from this has to include that method or itself be an abstract class. All right? For example, if we got down to birds, you know. Maybe I don't want to make bird a concrete class, you know, because there's all kinds of different birds, you know, and, and so on. So maybe I would make parrot, parakeet, cockatiel, and so on. I could then make bird an abstract class. Then I would have to, anything that inherited from bird, like parakeet, parrot, and so on, would have to implement that get sound. Can something have an abstract method and be a concrete class. You feel like it? No. Well, you feel correctly, right? Because if it's a concrete class, it means you can instantiate it. And you can instantiate a class that has an abstract method. So therefore, if you tried to slap an abstract method in a concrete class, it would complain. It would say you can't make an abstract method in a concrete class. All right. So abstract classes mean classes that never exist in the real world, only in that form. They're already more specific. You know, and you could, you could think of a hundred examples. A restaurant food might be an abstract class because no one ever goes to a restaurant and orders food. You know, you order a pizza, you order spaghetti, you order a burger. You don't order, you know, waiter, bring me some food. You know, that's not enough. So you'd create that as an abstract class, and then you could inherit pizza, sandwiches, and so on. You had a... Okay. All right. Yes. Yes. Uh, 
Okay. I, now, what, what, what are, what are, what's the other kind of calendars besides Gregorian calendar? Julian, right? Yeah, that's, okay, right, right. The Gregorian one is like the current one, right? Yeah, and the Julian is the older one, right? Wow. Um, so a class can be, a, an abstract class can have concrete methods, all right? Again, the generic get and set for name, weight, age would be the same for all pets. There's nothing special about a dog's name. A dog's name is a dog's name just like a cat's name is a cat's name. So you don't need any sort of special kind of function for that. So I can have a concrete method in pets to handle those things that are true for all pets. All right. However, the things that I don't want to define on this level, but I know every member Every subclass of this is going to have, I'll make an abstract class, like get sound. Get food would be another example. You know, get a, get a list of the things that you're supposed to food, feed this animal every day. All right? Well, that obviously is going to be different depending on the specific animal. So I would hesitate to put a get food method with a default value for all pets. All right? Because that doesn't make sense, you know? So I would declare that as an abstract method and say, I know every pet, I want to get a list of the food that they can eat, all right, or that they should eat or however you want to put it. But there certainly is no default behavior for the food that you feed your pets. That depends on the kind of pet. So I'd make it an abstract pet, uh, uh, method. I would then implement it for the specific pets. And then again, I could override it. I could create a default for dogs, you know, like a bull, you know, a eight ounce bowl full of dry dog food and 10 ounces of water or whatever, all right? I could then override that for a chihuahua if that's too much or make it bigger for a St. Bernard or whatever, all right? But I would not implement that on a pet level because there is no default. You could think of a default maybe for dogs. Maybe your typical dog should eat this much per day. But maybe some specialized versions have different. So you can define it. There's, there's so much flexibility here. And that's where really design comes into play, all right? Um, these are all tools that you have at your disposal, all right? Um, and they can allow you to create something that's real slick and real efficient, or it can allow you to create a big mess, all right? Uh, and therefore, you want to think about what you're going to create before you create it. Now, next week, we'll tackle the problem of multiple inheritance. All right? A bird is an animal. A bird's a pet. A bird's a flying thing. And a bird's a thing with feathers. So can I make the bird extend all those superclasses? The short answer is no. No multiple inheritance in Java. But we have something that is almost as good. Because with multiple inheritance, you run into the problem, well, what if animal and pet have two different methods for feeding or something like that? Which one do you use? Well, I don't know. All right. So you can only inherit from one class. But you can implement as many interfaces as you want. In a nutshell, an interface is like an abstract class that only has abstract methods. All right? It's like that. It's not the same thing, but it's like that. All right? Uh, and we'll cover that more next time. I don't want to get into it. But that's our catch so that we can kind of do multiple inheritance. Not really, but sort of. All right? Okay, I, I probably would go on the rest of the day if someone didn't stop me, so I'll stop myself now, and we'll go up the lab. Yes? Yes. Yes.